You see, we could have had tunnel vision for the house or for just the car or for just the baby, just the husband. But if we had tunnel vision for those things and for those things alone, there's no guarantee that we would even get it. But let's say that we did. If we did, that's all we would get. None of these things shall be added onto us. No, 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 no. We'll just get that thing that we decided to have tunnel vision for. Then we would have been shortchanged. I've created vision boards in the past and I've loved it. I've used logic with a bit of unrealism to create this aesthetically beautiful vision board that consists of my goals and my desires. And then I'll pray and ask God to bless this vision and help it to become a reality. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, God loves to fulfill our desires, especially when they come from a heart that he has made flesh. But I've realized the true definition of vision. And ultimately we should all have the same vision. Before we have vision for the house, the car, the job, career, the business, the husband, the baby, the body, the holiday. Before we have vision for any of those things, we should all have tunnel vision for God. Now you might think, mm, I kind of know that, or you know, it's giving cliche, <laughs> or it sounds cute, but the maths is not mathing, you know, it's not logical because if I have tunnel vision for God, then how will the house, the car, the job, the business, the husband, the baby, the body, the holiday manifest? And that's exactly what I'm going to share with you in this video and what God revealed to me. And I'm also gonna share my story because it's a living example of how tunnel vision for God is the best vision you could ever have. First things first, I wanna lay foundation. What does it mean to have tunnel vision for God? What does that look like? And so when I say we should have tunnel vision for God, what I mean is that we should have 2020 vision, clarity, a crystal clear picture of who God is, how much he loves us, his nature, how he operates, his principles, what he's said about us, about you, about me, what he's not said about us, that's extremely important. What he said about our haters, about the enemy, what he said about our purpose, what he has said about Jesus. It is so important that we have clarity, vision about who God is is and if i'm honest that's something you will spend the rest of your life doing but that should be the focus because the vision we have of god directly impacts the quality of our lives let me give you an example let's say you're driving it's raining it's dark your windscreen is foggy the wipers are going you can't really see too well how are you going to drive? You're gonna drive slowly, cautiously. You're gonna be squinting. You'll worry about whether or not you'll hit something. You won't be able to see if there are obstacles in front of you. Basically, it's a struggle. You're going to be struggling. And when you don't have vision, tunnel vision for God, then life is a struggle, right? But if that windscreen was clear and it wasn't raining and it was daylight and you can see clearly what would you do you'd have your foot on the accelerator and you would go full speed we'd step on the gas and we would go full speed towards that vision but the problem is we don't understand the true definition of vision and so therefore we hit the accelerator and we go full speed at not bad things, but not necessarily the right thing. We hear scriptures such as, where there is no vision, the people perish. And then we believe that we need clarity about our vision, about what's logical to us, about our desires, about our goals. 
but really we don't actually understand the true definition of vision. So the dictionary's definition of vision is the faculty or state of being able to see or the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. And I'm not saying that those definitions of vision are incorrect, but there is a foundational, fundamental meaning of vision that we all need to understand first. When I read that scripture, without vision, the people perish. I said, okay, cool, there's a problem. The problem has been identified. The problem is that without vision, the people perish. But what's the solution? Because in that same scripture, you receive the solution right and the solution is he that keepeth the law he is happy so i remember sitting there and i was like without vision the people perish that's the problem solution he that keepeth the law he is happy so the problem is no vision and as a result people perish so the solution to no vision is not to create a vision <laughs> not to insert a vision that makes sense to us, that seems logical to us, you know, that is in alignment with our desires and what the world says that we should be achieving and that we should strive for, no. The solution is, he that keepeth the law, he is happy. So then I asked myself, whose law? God's law. He that keepeth God's law, he is happy. And I thought, hmm, where does one find God's law? You find it in the word. And then in that moment, John 1.1 1, 1 came to mind. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So then I started to read the scripture like this. He that keepeth God, he is happy. Right? Problem. Without vision, the people perish. Solution. He that keepeth God, he is happy. Keepeth him as what? Keepeth him as your focus, as your friend, as your father, as your marriage counsellor, as your guide, as your advisor, as your CEO, as your benchmark, as your mirror. Without vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth God, he is happy. And then I thought, why is he so happy? <laughs> like, why is he so happy? happy and i thought mm, could it be that because he decided to seek first the kingdom of god that not only did he build intimacy with god but on top of that all these things were added on to him i thought maybe that's why he's so happy <laughs> because he me you decided to seek first the kingdom of god not only did we get to know God and know how much he loves us, not only did we get to uncover our purpose and the power and the authority that we have, but on top of all these already abundant things that we've received, all these other things were added onto us. The house, the car, the job, the business, the husband, the baby, the body, the holiday. And that came from what? Understanding what the true definition of vision is. You see, we could have had tunnel vision for the house or for just the car or for just the baby, just the husband. But if we had tunnel vision for those things and for those things alone, there's no guarantee that we would even get it. But let's say that we did. If we did, that's all we would get. None of these things shall be added onto us. No, 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 no. We'll just get that thing that we decided to have tunnel vision for, then we would have been shortchanged. But we're not confused about the meaning of vision anymore. Can I put forward to you that the meaning of vision, the true definition of vision is God. After me and God had that conversation there, I had to sit down for a minute and deep it. <laughs> and I said, wow, that's the true definition of vision. When you even think about God and who he is, when you even think about Jesus and him being the light of this world, what comes with light? Vision. If there's darkness, where's, what, what vision do you have? He is vision. God is vision. We need to stop calling it vision board and call it a God board. And see, here's the thing. I mentioned all these things shall be added onto you when you seek God. 
seek first the kingdom of God. But all the things I listed were material things. Because when you seek first the kingdom of God, actually, all these things that shall be added onto you include vision for your life, your purpose, what God wants you to do in every season of your life. Because you see, if you don't seek first the kingdom of God and you don't have intimate relationship with him and you don't know who you are and what he said about you and how much he loves you and how much power and authority and confidence he's given you, then he can't give you vision about your purpose because when he does, or if he does, you'll say, no, 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 that's not me. I can't do that because you don't know who you truly are in him. You will disqualify yourself. And so when you have vision for God, when you seek first the kingdom of God, all these things that shall be added unto you is more than just material things. He's able to share secrets with you about what he has planned for you to do. So what does that mean? Does that mean that I should throw all of my desires and my goals out of the window? <laughs> and I'm not saying you should do that, but what I did this year is I had flesh goals and I had faith goals and I think by now it's pretty obvious what the faith goal should be right tunnel vision for God but I also had my flesh goals so I was aware of what my flesh goals were right I want the house the car the business the thriving business the body, the holidays. I don't cop the husband and I'm on baby number three now, <laughs> right? But I'm very aware of my flesh goals. I know what they are and I've let my requests be made known unto God. That's fine, that's cool. But those flesh goals don't take precedence or priority over my faith goal, which is to know God intimately to know him more and more each day intimately. That's what I have tunnel vision for. That is my priority. Now the foundation's laid, I'm going to share my story because this story is real life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. And so in 2021, I was chasing money. 